Good day, Grid Tools. Welcome to week 13. So, so far we've learned about work and energy and the conservation of mechanical energy. In this lesson, you're going to learn about power. So please watch the mindset video very carefully and then go do the assessments in the turnable system. <laughs> Hello Grade 12s, welcome to our series on work, energy and power. Today we are going to look at the concept of power. We have previously looked at work and energy. Now let's watch this presentation on power. Here's an interesting thing. Scientists also use the concept of power when talking about electricity. This should give you a clue that there is a link between mechanical energy and electrical energy. We will not discuss the relationship between mechanical and electrical energy in this lesson, but I'm sure you will notice some similarities as we go along. Let's get going by defining power in relation to work. Power is the rate at which work is done. By now we know that work is all about the transfer of energy. Energy is used when work is done. So we can also say that power is the rate at which energy is transferred. I want you to look at examples to see what we mean when we say that power is defined as the rate of work done. A woman climbs to the top of five meter stairs in one minute, while a child takes one and a half minutes to get to the top. Who does the work at the fastest rate? Who is the most powerful? Well, I would say obviously the woman does the work faster. Good, Chad. Here is another example. A supermarket packer places 2,000 boxes, which each have a mass of 20 kilograms, on a 1,7 meter high shelf. He does this in the last 40 minutes of his shift. During the same period, another packer places 1,460 of these 20 kilogram boxes on the same height shelf. Who do you think is more powerful? I hope that you said that the first packer is more powerful. Now, do you think the definition of work gives us any clues about how to calculate power? Well, if power is the rate at which work is done, it means that we need to take time into account. To calculate rate, we divide the work done by the time it takes to do the work. So power is represented mathematically as work done over time taken. Or we could also calculate power by dividing energy used by the time taken. Remember, the standard international unit of work is joule, and for time we use seconds. So power must be measured in joule per second. In SI units, this combination is called watt. The power of one watt means that work is being done at the rate of one joule per second. The next thing we need to come to grips with is that power is also related to velocity. Let's see what this means. Think of a car moving forward with a constant velocity. The motor car engine exerts a constant force to balance the total frictional force and to drive the car forwards. To understand how power and velocity are related, we'll start with the equation for power, which is work divided by time. We also know that work can be represented by force times displacement. You should remember that velocity is calculated by the displacement of the car in the time taken to move over this distance. Do you see how we can then say that power can also be calculated as force times velocity? This is only true at constant velocity. Now I think it's time to use the equations we have looked at to work through a couple of power calculations. For our first calculation, let's imagine that a constant force of 2 kN pulls a crate along a level floor over a distance of 10 meters in 50 seconds at constant velocity. What is the power used? Well, I think we'll first have to calculate the work done before we get to the power. Absolutely right. To determine work done, we use the equation work equals force times displacement times cos theta. 
substituting the given information into the equation, we get 2,000 Newton because we first convert from kilonewton times 10 meters times cos of zero degrees. This gives us 20,000 joule. Now, to find power, we use the equation power equals total work done divided by time taken. All we have to do is divide 20,000 joule by 50 seconds, which gives us 400 watt. Do you think we could calculate the power in a different way? The answer is yes, there is an alternative. Because power is also force times velocity, we could first calculate the velocity. We see that velocity is 10 meters divided by 50 seconds. This equals 0,2 meters per second. Now we can substitute to calculate power as force times velocity. This equals 2,000 Newton times the velocity of 0,2. In this way, we find that power equals 400 Watt. I hope you've noticed that we got the answer of 400 Watt, whether we used the work over time equation or the force times velocity equation. Remember, we can only use the formula P equals F times V when the velocity is constant. Now for another example. This time we'll consider a racing car on a straight track. A racing car of 600 kilograms accelerates from rest to a speed of 40 meters per second in 25 seconds. What is the racing car's power? You might be wondering how to calculate power here. We are not given force or distance. We can't calculate power by means of power equals force times velocity because the car is accelerating, which means that the velocity is not constant. What about using power equals work over time? Well, it will take a couple of steps. Let's work through them. First, we must calculate the work done by the car's engine. This is calculated using the equation net work equals change in kinetic energy. Remember, final and initial kinetic energies can also be calculated using half mass times velocity squared. Okay, I follow so far. Let me try that calculation. Right, I start with the equation of course, then substitute in the given values. Well, wow, that's quite a calculation. I'll use the calculator. Okay, so the racing car does 480,000 joules of work. Well done, Chad. Now that we have a figure for the work done by the car, we can use the equation power equals work divided by time to calculate the power of the racing car. When substituting the values, we find 480,000 divided by 25, which amounts to 19,200 watt. There are situations where you may be required to calculate the average power. In such cases, we must apply this formula. Average power is equal to force times average velocity. Here is an example. A one kilogram toy car experiences a net friction of five newton and moves on a 30 degrees inclined toy road at a steady speed of 0 0.5 meters per second. Calculate the power of the propeller. The total friction of force is five newton when the toy car moves at a steady speed. We can conclude that the net force is zero and therefore the applied force in the forward direction is also 5 Newton. Therefore, the average power is equal to the force multiplied by the average velocity. When we substitute into the equation correctly, the answer is 2,5 Watt. Notice that the SI unit for power is Watt, abbreviated as W. Let us try a different example where we must apply a formula of work done by non-conservative force. Here is an example. Calculate the power required for an electric motor to pump 20 kilograms of water up to the ground level at 5 meters per second through an outlet from a borehole of depth 10 meters in half a minute. 
We must note that the electric pump does negative work because it pumps the water against the force of gravity, which does positive work. We will approach the problem by using the formula to calculate the work done by the non-conservative force first. Thereafter, we will calculate the power by applying the formula to calculate power. By substituting correct values into the work done by a non-conservative force equation, the work done by the non-conservative force is 2,210 joule. At this stage, we can now apply the other formula to calculate power. Power is equal to the work done divided by the change in time. Substitute the value of the work done by the non-conservative force into the equation of power and divide by 30 seconds and the final answer is 73,67 Watt. This brings us to the end of our lesson on power grade 12s. You can also find more information about work at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video. Take care and goodbye.